and, and address some things with when it comes to the recent deaths of, um, you know, the recent deaths has happened, the recent police brutality issues, the recent shootings, all the different things. There's, eh, you know, bear with me here because it, it's there's a lot of emotion in this. There is a lot of um, concern in this and believe God to give me the utterance to say what has to be said. Uh, bear with me because I know at the end of the day, when we talk about racial issues, I know I don't forget, you know, I'm white and I'm not afraid to acknowledge that part and say that, you know, please bear with me when it comes to like, hey, what's your woke level, Wes, on a scale of one to 10, maybe two or three. You know, I'm, I'm not going to try to over exaggerate that or say it's all there on that part. But I am as a leader here. I am here to have the tough conversations. I am here to deal with the hurt because there is hurt. And you can't just walk by and say there's no hurt. It is. Uh, and for good reason, by the way, uh, I'm here to deal with and, and face tough questions that may come up later. Hey, you know, what do you feel about this? What do you feel about that? And, and, and what, what are we doing as a church? What are we doing here? And I'm going to tell you right now, we don't have all the answers. Right now, we're having to walk this out one step at a time, one day at a time. But we are not we're not um, we're not rushing, but we're also not going to be complacent and silent either. Let me make that real clear. I'm not here to sit on the sideline either. Uh, this, I understand, you know, in our church, we have a very uh, diverse far as background and ethnic, you know, we have our, uh, from all over the world, especially in New York, it is, but this affects us as a church whole, you know, whether that, whether no matter what the color of your skin is on this feed, or if you're watching this video later is what it is, this affects you. It affects us all. It affects us all as a church. If one is hurting, we are all hurting. If one is bleeding, we all got to pay attention to that. We all got to be there is what we got to do. And right now, there are people in our community. Some of you on this very chat, there's people um, in our church that are hurting, that are seriously hurting. And we cannot be blind to that. We cannot be insensitive to that. We cannot just say, you know, it's not really my problem. It's or it's not really my fight. Hey, as Christians, you know better. We can't do that approach. But even more in this area. And yeah, go ahead and submit questions. I saw that. Go ahead and ask questions. It's okay. I may answer the questions probably more towards the end. So Nicole's taking them all down. Put them up there. Don't feel like you're not being heard. It's just we're going to answer everything at the end because I, I really, once I get in the flow of what I'm about to minister on, I want to make sure we, we focus and we zero in on what's got to be said because it's a lot of sensitive material. It's a lot of challenging. Yeah, it, it challenges me. It challenges everybody here. And it challenges all our thinking. And we have to be open-minded to shift. We have to be open-minded to evolve. We have to be open-minded to acknowledge, maybe I'm not seeing this right. Maybe I'm not fully as educated as I believe or understanding or sympathetic or compassionate or active as I should be. There is that part too. So I'm going to go through this and it's going to be kind of a mini message. I, I didn't feel it in my heart and Nicole and I didn't feel that it would be right with everything that just happened. All this is supposed to be a happy hour. It's supposed to be ending on a high note. We're going to do our best to present hope at the end is our goal here. But at the end of the day, we didn't feel it was right to come on here live and not talk about this, you know, and just kind of be like, oh, do we talk about it as a church? Do we not? No, we're going to deal with it. So here we go is what we're going to do. You know, this is this is something I'm going to be talking about for a minute. It's not it's going to start here with this Facebook, this YouTube live, but it's not going to end here. This is a starting place. Uh, and like I said, I appreciate everybody's coming on here. I hope you share this. Please share it. Please share it. Please share it. I see, you know, I thank God for the 40 people on, but I tell you, let me tell you about a thousand people are going to need to get involved or more in our church and get, get, get involved in this. We're just going to have to show up and do it. So thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to approach it from this angle. If you didn't hear Dr. Dolly and Pastor Taffy this morning, I encourage you to go listen to this morning's message and not just the message itself. I hope they include the, the communion part of it because it addressed some very powerful things. And Dr. Dollar was able to address it in, in some very articulate ways, intelligent ways as it, and, and speak from a really different angle. And I'm really appreciating it because I'm listening to so many different voices and so many different angles. So let me get started in this. How I'm going to package this, if you want to give it a title, and I'm not trying to do a total sermon, but I'm kind of doing a mini sermon. So it's here, here it is. You know, I want us to understand being sensitive to heartbreak. And that's the angle I'm going to approach this whole thing from. We have to be sensitive to heartbreak. People's hearts are not breaking. They've been broken. That's it right now. And everything you're seeing right now in this world 
is people's heart broken. And that's the starting place. We can't see it as it's just a bunch of people angry, just a bunch of people rioting, just a bunch of people being mad and having different things. We can no longer bypass it by saying it's just a bunch of Democrats, a bunch of Republicans, a bunch of liberals, a bunch of white, a bunch of black, a bunch of Hispanic, a bunch of Asian. You can't do anything that it starts with there's heartbreak here. And as a church, as people, period, as a community, but I'm, I'm speaking because I'm talking to our church right now is the reason I'm addressing this way. We have to be sensitive to that and we have to do something about it. And I'm going to walk through some of those steps. I'm going to walk through some of the whys. I'm going to give some understanding. And like I said, there's no way I can do a hundreds and hundreds of your problem, address it in literally probably 25 minutes. I can only start the conversation. So please understand this is a starting place for us. I mean, it really, honestly, you know, I'm looking back hindsight and learning and growing myself. The conversations were slightly started, but they probably should have been started a lot more in depth before and sooner than when we got here. And, and it's, yeah, better late than never. But man, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, I'll, even with myself, I wish we had started these conversations sooner. I wish I had started these conversations sooner. And but here we are today and let's do it. The starting base of this, when you talk about sensitive heartbreak, let me explain some of the foundation first before I get to the sensitivity part and explain this. Now, I'm going to address it's this is it affects all of us, but this is heavy based in American culture right here in American history. I have to say that because we have so many of us from all over the world. So it's trying to connect that I am coming because we live in America, this is America's history right here is what we're dealing with. This is the history between black and white here is also what I'm coming from. And it is spilling out in our streets right now. And I need you to understand that so much up front right now, but it is spilling over on everybody right now. And it involves everybody right now. So I'm going to take some biblical things and I'm going to take some practical things is what I'm going to take some things. So we, we talk about in Galatians Chapter three, Pastor Taffy started this with gender equality, but her message was not just gender equality. It was equality for everything. It was equality for every one, every human being. If you want to know what the fight is over, really, ultimately, why are all those people angry? Why are all those people rioting? Why is everybody doing what they're doing? They are fighting for their right to be equal. And that right has not been acknowledged. It has not. It's been spoken, but it has not been executed and carried out. It has not been. It has not happened. And that's why things are going on right now the way they're going on. That's where the hurt comes from, where over and over again, it's been promised. Oh, yeah, you're equal. Oh, yeah, we passed this law. Oh, yeah, we signed this piece of paper. But the action carried out and demonstrated with those pieces of paper, the actions demonstrated with, yes, you can quote the most eloquent speech across a, a presidential stage right now. But if this country does not act on it and carry it out at every level, we're going to keep repeating history here is what's going to keep happening. And we're back here again because promises were made once again and they were broken. And it is not the people writing that broke it. It is not the people that are angry that broke it. It's not the people that are protesting that broke it. And I'm not saying, oh, are you advocating for violence? It's not even about that right now. I don't even want to address that right now because I don't want to people. Sadly, the reason I'm having to do that in our society, we use those terms to deflect the real issue, which is these black people right now in America historically are known for not being treated as equals and not being seen as equals. It's just a flat out truth in our country. And we can no longer turn a blind to it. I don't care if we're church. I don't care if we're Christians as Christians. We should be even more involved with it more than ever because it is human life and it is our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it is humanity is what it is. And we are the people that scream. We love humanity. Well, here's our opportunity to show we love humanity right here. Um, but Galatians 3, we talk about there is no. There, we're all one in Christ Jesus. There's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor free, female, slave nor free. We're all one and we all have access to the kingdom of God. That is the truth in the word of God. That is a great statement. I believe that with all my heart. I confess that with all my heart. I, I preach that with all my heart and I want everybody to lay hold of that with all heart. But what we have to acknowledge is we live in a world where that is true. That is the truth. But it is not believed by the heart of every person in this world and in this nation. It's just the flat out fact right now. We live in a nation where that truth is not believed in. That is not considered the highest form of truth right there. 
It's not. So we have to still keep addressing the issue over. Hey, we said it once. It doesn't matter if you said it once. We have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, because people are refusing that truth right now. That's what it is. Spiritual, natural side. So here's the natural side of that. Said, how does that translate in America? You have to understand with America history, you cannot. You have to go back to the founding forefathers, which I will not go that far, but I will touch um, slavery. You have to go back to the Civil War and slavery. What led up to that? That is still the dominoes from those decisions are still playing into the decisions of today. That you cannot disconnect what's happening today from that. If you do that, you will be lost and you will not understand what is really going on right now. And don't be wrong. There's people on this this uh, chat right now. There are members. There are you that are on this that can tell this better than I can. OK, I acknowledge that up front, but I'm doing my part as a leader, as a pastor, one to show where I am with it, where Nicole and I stand with it, where as a church and ministry, we stand with it for our other brothers and sisters that are outside the black community that may not fully connect and understand what is going on for some of our younger generation that don't fully understand the whole backstory to where we are today. There's so many angles right here we, we are trying to do. I want to give you know this opportunity to open that conversation. That was the other thing. I want you to feel safe that, hey, I may not can have this in other places because other people reject it, other people shut it down. But I want you to know, at least right here, your leaders, you, you know, as a lead pastor here, it, you're not going to experience that here at this table and at this desk. And I want you to feel at least safe here because I am responsible to you guys for that. Um, so with the, the starting place, here's what you got to understand about America, you know, with the history of why that scripture I just gave you in Galatians 3 with America. Black people in America, period, are not viewed as human beings. There's, there's actually laws still out there that have not been completely erased and eradicated in our nation right now. Let's say, what's the statistic, babe? What, what do they say, the three-fifths human? Yeah, in slavery, they were listed as, they were counted as three-fifths of the human it, it was literally written in the law that black people were considered three-fifths human. Literally, that means you're not human. And that's why, you know, it undermines when we say all. Yeah, all humans. But what happens if you tell someone all lives matter, but then all lives matter only they only think human lives. And now you're saying, oh, I think black people are not human or don't qualify for human is what that is. And that's why they discount them from the word all because it's like, oh, you don't qualify. Why? Because you're a sh few shades below being called a human. And that's wrong. That's where it's like equality is so important. That's when we say equality. That's where, it, and here's what it is. You try to take, and I'm going to be just the most raw, layman term version to say this because I don't have a lot of time to say it. That's where you get all the statements in America where black people are associated with apes. And I'm going to be raw about it. That has happened. That's where all the slang, derogative words and slanderous words come to is to say, hey, let me keep projecting this thing to say black people are animals and not humans. So if you're a considered animal, you do not qualify for human rights. And that is the that is the message. Why? So others, and including white people, particularly, unfortunately, in our culture and our history, and even spilling over in today, can maintain their place of superiority. Why? We're a higher class of being because we're humans and you're not. And that is what people are angry and outraged about. That is exactly it. Don't make it about anything else. That is it right there at the core of it. You can time and time again, we use derogative terms. We use the word thug. We use the word rioters. We use the word looters. You don't realize those are code words issued by white supremacy is what it is to make say those are animals. Every one of the underlying tones of every one of those code words, you're an animal. That is the whole thing. And if we can continue to program in people's minds. And they have done everything they can to program in this, the black community and told in telling black people, you are animals, you are animals, you are in, drove that in with slavery and everything else. And now all the residue of that has not gone away. Slavery might be over. Segregation might be over. And we might declare racism is over. But no, the part about still viewing black people as animals instead of human is well and alive right now. And we have not dealt with that programming in the side of anyone that comes in this nation and anyone that grew up in this nation.
no matter what your background is, no matter what it is, that is going on still today. And we have to deal with that. And that is why people are upset. Now, let me keep moving because I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to rush through a hundreds and hundreds of year of problems just to at least start the conversation today. Let me keep moving. You know, we talk about First Timothy 6.10. What fuels all this? And that's why I said, go listen to the pastor this morning because he hit this one side of it. What fuels all this? First Timothy 6.10, the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And that's not talking about just money. See, the, the love of money is the root of evil, and it's fueling all this agenda right now because one group of people is saying, you know what? I love providing for myself. I love, I, I, I'm afraid of not having, or I need to have more, excuse me. And it's driving this place, well, I need to provide for me and my family and my race so much, so let me enslave and oppress another race of human beings to get that. That's what's all coming out of this. So if you follow the money, I'm telling you, every time someone makes a money statement and chooses to side with the money, that's white supremacy right there. There's no other way to put that, no way to call it. And it's so indated in our country. It's so indated in our education systems. It's so filled up with our history books and everything else. You're programmed and you don't even realize it's the air you breathe. But every time you side with that money, that fuels that thing is what it does. So we're making money decisions instead of human rights and valuing human beings decision. And that's why some of the outrage you have to balance when you say, man, rioters are tearing up things. OK, I, I'm not going to say that's right. Don't get me wrong, but do not compare that with the value of a human life that was just ripped from the earth. They don't compare. That is a problem. You know, we got problems here, but don't put them both up here. No, that goes way down here. Because why? When we focus on that, we still never deal with this. And I'll get into that. I'm going to jump ahead if I get. But you got to see the fight is that's where all the strife comes. That's where all the division comes from is how you view the love of money. Do you value human life more or do you value money more? And that's what all this comes down to. And how does that show up? Well, we create white supremacy in America created a system, an entire system based on, hey, let me fuel my love of money. So it shows up. Here's where it shows up practically on our day to day. It shows up in our education systems. Don't, don't even try to sweat on me. They, let me let me start before I list these off. The thing that came to me, they took basic human rights and created an exclusive VIP experience out of it. That's what happened. And if you don't have this shade of skin, you don't have access to it. This is your access card to it all right here. And that, that, that VIP experience, which should never have happened, is education, is our health care, is our police force, is our government in every aspect in the justice system. And the list can keep going on and on. It's jobs, it's pay. It's every level of every aspect of everything you feel, oh, I have to work for, even as a white person, you, you don't get denied access to, though. You don't get denied the right to progress and move forward. I love how Pastor pointed out this morning, you know, oppression is taking people's right away to decide their future. And that's what that does every time. And we say, OK, you know, we're going to decide your future. Why? Because we need to control you because you might be able to dip into what I got right now. And that's, that's just sick twisting right there is what it is. So it's all fueled out of that money is what it is. And it shows up in all our systems. And in America, and I'm, that I'm being very civic in America, so I understand people have come from all over. I'm not addressing at, uh, the issues that may be going on in other countries. Racism and the way this thing flows different. I am talking as an American that understands what we are facing right now. And when you go out on your streets right now, literally in Harlem and Brooklyn and everywhere else around the United States of America, this is what it's about here. This is how the government is structured here, unfortunately. And it's not OK. But we got to give more understanding of that to connect why people are out outraged, why people are upset and why people are just honestly hurt. They are hurt for every good reason. Um, and I'll get to more of that hurt because that's where I got to land with all this. Uh, so, you know, we're that's what's going on. We're continuously fueling the system. Why? That system. Hey, if there if black people are viewed as animals, you don't get access to that system. You don't get access. Right. So it's easy to say, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to trash all police officers, but it's easy for someone like me with my color of skin to say, 
Oh, there's only a few bad police. Why? Because I will never experience the level of bad police because I'm white and they don't treat me that way. Versus you'll hear a black person said most police are bad. Why? Because their skin is automatically programmed. You're not a human being. I'm afraid of you or I'm going to mistreat you and abuse you in a certain way. And that's why, you know, when black people say that to any other nationality, especially white people, they can't connect because we don't experience the same thing they experience. We don't experience the same thing black people experience. Why? Because we are not black and we are not viewed less than human. America has made it its mission more than any other nationality. And they have done some horrific things to other nationalities. Man, you know, they've done horrible things to Asian people. They've done horrible things and are still doing horrible things to this man, community right now that I have no, I do not support in any way or agree with. But, and they have done whoa, almost genocide to the Native American people. But this part about making a, a race of people animals in America, specifically America, has never been more targeted any other race than the black community. That's what it is. That's what's going on. And that's our fight right now. Um, Psalm 34, I want to give you the heartbeat of God here. I want to sw switch over to being sensitive to heartbreak. I gave you the reason why everybody's upset. Everybody's angry. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not going to take that away from them because too many times, I'm not going to take that away from the black, black community. Too many times that has been shut down and said, shut up, be silent. And we can be insensitive and say certain code words, actually, we don't realize that come out of white supremacy and that are code words that say, oh, it triggers all white people because we're so programmed to respond like that. Why shut you up? Make you be quiet. And people are tired of it. They're like, well, he's shutting up. You told us, hey, if you shut up, we'll, we'll, we'll make it right and we'll fix it. And then they, they shut up. And then we're back here five years later. This is not new. Michael Brown, this all happened in Atlanta and other areas back then too. And they told them all to shut up and go home. And yet here we are. We're here again. And the message is the same. And people are just aren't buying it this time. You're not going to lie to me and tell me to shut up and go home. And we cannot respond to that because if I go shut up, shut up and go home, we're going to be back here again. And we need to deal with it is what we need to do. Um, the Psalm 34, 7, I'm not going to read these scriptures just all the way through because I realize I got to keep moving. Um, it, it talks about God's God hears the cry of people and God's near to the broken heart. He's close to the broken heart and rescues them. That is the heartbeat of God. And as Christians, unfortunately, because some of our culture and background, especially in my culture and background, we don't realize it gets fused into our Christianity and says, well, you know, we can take a scripture like Galatians 3 and says, oh, all men belong to Christ. All humans belong to Christ. But if you don't think black people are human, even as a Christian, you won't include them in that. And I hate saying that. As Christians, we got to challenge that. And guys, here's why you, you, you know, some of you already know. It's like, Wes, we get this part. I know. If you say you already get this, it, then, hey, I'm, I'm just sounding off is all I'm doing for you. And I'm trying to connect with everybody and bring us all together on this thing. I'm trying to bring us all in uh, together and hopefully create unity by understanding what we're dealing with, what we're facing, what the issue is, however it affects us. Um, but to jump in. But that's the heartbeat of God to be close to people, to, to be that. But if you don't think that person is actually because of the programming in you, you think that person is not quite human status, you'll even reserve the rights and covenant of grace. And that's what's happening in churches in America right now. Yeah. Oh, if you're white, you got all the access to God. But if you think a black person isn't human, you're not going to think they have all the access to God. It's just what it is on that part. And it has fueled the church and the government in our origins of nations has used the church as their puppet. They have. And it's, that's what we call religion. And, you know, in our church and our pastors, man, when we used to believe the religious, traditional mosaic law way, there was so much not only Jewish mosaic custom in that. We also had to sort through all the American religion that was infused in that and all the white supremacy religion that was infused into all that. They would literally, slave masters would take scriptures out of context. It wasn't the word of God was wrong. It was the, 
It was the one that was teaching it and twisting it and manipulating so they can make money and provide for the family off the backs of another race that was used. And these people, there was people, so many people from the black community, because part of the largest, actually part of the body of Christ, I am coming more to believe and realize is the black community, by the way. And so you're taking people that are Christians, that are black, that are slaves, that want to serve God, that want to love God, and you're making them feel like you need to do these things to serve God and bending them to that and getting them to submit to those things so that person can use them to go pick, pick cotton out in the field, to go build their house, to go mow the lawn, to go do all these just, and, and I won't even get into it because I'll, I'll get too fired up if I start talking about all of it and I need to stay focused here because there was horrific, horrific acts. I mean, between murder, between rape, between so many, they literally use black people like cattle with breeding to make more slaves. Don't think that didn't happen. And don't think that didn't happen two, 300 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. And people forget, segregation just ended back in the late 50s. And when I say it ended, I mean the law was all that was written on that. America's brand new to this thing still um, when it comes to that passing that. So we're, we're not far out of the woods at all on this thing. So what we're dealing with, God, I want to give you the heartbeat of, of God right here. He's near to the brokenhearted. Let me tell you, black people's hearts, and really all of our hearts should be, are completely broken. They're so broken. And then to judge their response from the brokenheartedness, like I'm seeing right now, even on social media, is, is not right. It's just not. You can't get up there and judge people for rioting and then not acknowledge the fact that you caused it. The oppressor caused that. The oppressor wounded them repeatedly over and over and raped them in every possible way you could think of. And then you're mad because they're fighting back out of fear for their lives because so many times, times after again and again, the lives were taken and stripped wrongfully and people were literally murdered. And people ask, you know, just inhumane questions about it and give inhumane responses and code words and about it. And I'm, I'm believing at World Changers, hey, let me, let me be very careful with you guys. My, my hurt is not, or there is no anger towards anybody on this chat. If you are listening to this and you're a world teacher, I have no anger for you in my heart. I have no malice towards you. I have no, uh, no anything towards you. I, th there's just hurt there. And I, and it, it's, it's hurt watching. And I, and I want everybody else to see that hurt of, man, we got to do something. We've got to do something. We can't just fall asleep at the switch like we have so many times. I know some of you on here like, I've been in this all the time. Hey, I, I, I understand. I'm talking to more than just the black community on this thing right now. And I'm hoping this message will go more than just to the black community. Because like I said, there's many things the black community can say, Wes, I could talk about this better than you. I know. But I also know sometimes if a white person gets up and says it, a white other white person is like, well, I can't just dismiss that as the angry black person just ranting again. No, I'm going to challenge you and get in your face a little bit. Um. But I'm also conveying to our World Changers Church. Guys, you are wonderful, loving people. I've had the honor of being a part of so many of your lives for at least two years now, some more. And I've seen your hearts. And I know the love on the inside of you. And all I'm doing is I'm provoking that love and all of us coming together and saying, let's do something. Let's not be silent. No, let's not go to this place of hate. Let's not go to this place of division. But do not be complacent. Do not be so silent. Stand up and say something. And yes, stand up and say something on social media. Yes, I encourage you to flood social media. I, I encourage you, though, on the day-to-day -day things, let's say some stuff. One of the things I realized, like Pastor talked about, and this is where my journey started. It started in my own home. It started before I ever met Nicole. It started back when I had to learn how to start youth pastoring all black American teens. And I was faced with this back with Michael Brown. I remember that so well. And that's where that journey started. And we started having conversations. 
And it's in the day to day. It starts at your job. When you see someone say something racist, it's okay to challenge them. There's been times back when I worked at my last job in the restaurant industry, somebody, white person come through, say the most ugly thing. I looked at him and loved. I said, that is so racist what you just said. And they're like, and I, but it, and, and I didn't attack them for it, but I challenged them. And that's where it starts. And I want us as a community to feel free as a church to do that, not to attack people, but to challenge people, not to just look the other way. Because people, if they're challenged, it gives an opportunity to change. It gives, but then on the other hand, it's like, hey, we're not going to tolerate you treating our brothers and sisters like this either. I'm not going to allow you to come through. God forbid that was one of our members that was brutally murdered. God forbid that. Because it's on the back step. Of, it's on the back, our back porch right now is what it literally is. Um, so let me get moving here. So here's some things. We, let me give you some code words to give you an idea and examples of where these code words are. It's like, what code words are you talking about? Uh, when they say when people are protesting. People are out protesting. And I get there's a few here and they're doing some crazy stuff. And some of what we're even finding out is not black people doing that. There's people... White people doing the getting out there, trying to stir the pot again. There's people being literally right now infiltrated into the groups to cause rioting. And it's not actually the black protesters that are rioting. And so we have to be careful before we just jump and use that word rioting. And I'm not going to give people the, the permission to use that word rioting and dismiss what's going on. So I'm going to say when people are protesting and we say you're a bunch of looters, you're a bunch of thugs and you need to go home. Those are code words to shut people up. That's what they are. And it becomes very insensitive to say, to say, to say those things. And here's the thing. I could understand if we could say, you need to go home and please stop that because we've heard your cry. We've, we were going out there and protesting with you. Or we're going out there on the front steps of some of the Capitol buildings and saying, protesters, please come to us and talk to us. That's not happening. It's happening in very few cities, and thank God some of them are figuring it out. But the majority where the riots are breaking out is because there's not a public official, a public figure going out hardly to the front steps and saying, I see you, I acknowledge you, and here is actual things we are going to do. Here is a step-by-step -step plan we are putting together. Here's a review board that we're going to put together to say, you know what? Um, we're going to be able to monitor our police officers better. We're going to be able to retrain our police officers better. We're going to acknowledge some of those things. None of that's being said. So you can't say, go home, is what you can't do. You can't tell people how to grieve and how to hurt when you're not even acknowledging the hurt at all. I mean, these are basic principles we do with rape victims, molestation victims, you know, it, 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 all those areas. And, and I wish I had more time to get into it. I mean, this may go a little bit longer than an hour, but but whatever. I don't care at this moment. I'm going to get through this. That's what I'm going to do. So you got to be careful of that. Um, you can say statements like you can leave a blank statement that can come across cold and say, go vote. Now, first of all, let me be very careful. Go vote. But don't just say only go vote, because unfortunately, you, you're speaking to black people that said, I did go vote. And you know what happened? They didn't count my vote or they didn't allow me to vote. And don't think that isn't going on in our nation. And don't think that hasn't been a time as old as uh, a tale as old as time. So you cannot say go vote and then not say go vote because we are going to make sure your vote counts. And we're going to do these systems and these these laws. And we're going to rewrite some things and say um, we're going to make sure you are able to get your vote in. And it does get counted. That's the balance. You've got to balance it before you just make a cold blank statement. And I know it's like most of you are like, I don't do that. And, and I, like I said, share it then. Share it. Because I'm telling you, unfortunately, my, my white brothers and sisters, we do say it all the time. Because it, it just it doesn't even really program with those code words that say, let me reinforce the system that says black people are not human. And that's what happens. So that's one of the statements. Um, when you say statements like, and most people are, are going to immediately jump about this one, is all lives matter. I don't want to hear all lives matter. <laughs> Sorry for being a little blunt about that, because unfortunately, if you don't think black people are human, they're not included in all. Right now, we have clearly seen all lives don't matter and liberty and justice is not for all. It should be. The American dream should be. 
But unfortunately, it is not carried out and is not executed. Until it is, we have to say Black Lives Matter. That's why that, that came out, because Black Lives has never been included in all lives. Sorry, I know some people are going to see this later and be like, what the heck, Wes, are you saying? I'm like, it's true. Explain it to the list of names of, uh, of people that, of black people that have been murdered. That, and people don't care. And that's the other side of it. People need to know we care. But let me not, I'm going to build up to that because I'm doing a, a call and response is what I'm going to do at the end of this. Not a shame and response either, though. Be very clear. I'm not here to do a shame and response. I want to do a call and response. I don't need to do a ridicule. I don't need people to move because they are afraid. I don't need people to get involved in the cause because they're afraid, they're ashamed, or they need to prove they're not racist. No, 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 no. That's not the goal, guys. It's not to prove you're not racist, man. It's not to prove that we're, we're not against you. No, we want people that are saying, I'm saying, I'm for you and I'm going to take action. That's really what, that's what we need more than ever. I don't, you know, I don't want to get people in the defensive mode where it's like, I feel like I need to defend myself. I don't need you busy wasting time defending yourself. I need you to jump into the cause and realize, welcome. I, I, maybe you were dumb. Maybe you didn't figure it out. Maybe you were uneducated. Maybe you were all these things. Maybe you said some racist stuff and maybe you didn't know better. Here, if you want to get involved, get involved now then and we'll deal with that other stuff. But right now the house is burning down and we need to deal with it. And we don't have time to split hairs about it. That's it. The house is burning down. We'll, we'll split hairs after we put the fire out. But right now we got to put the fire out because it's burning everything down. I don't mean to associate that with the protest and please me, but it, 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 the analogy holds true. So be careful when you make statements like all, because when black people hear that, it's like all doesn't mean me, bro. You're talking about your exclusivity because all includes you. So you can't you can't recognize when people do that. Um, the next one, let me keep it moving here because I need to deal with these last two. Ooh, this one's going to be tough. And I already addressed it a little bit. You cannot give religious responses. Ooh, it's easy to tell a black person when you're not black. Trust God. And that's cold. It can come across cold in your heart. I... Ooh, let me be careful, church. Let me be careful, my fellow lovely blessings of my members. You, you're wonderful people. And your intent is to try to do your best. But I'm, I'm also showing you, hey, don't be surprised if you say some of these terms and you care. And there's times people lash back at you. Black people lash back at you because you're saying trigger words to them. And I'll get to that in a moment. It's rooted out of trauma. That's where I'm going to land is the trauma and the hurt. And um, so we can use religious crusades and quote biblical characteristics. And we're, we, but because our culture of religion and white supremacists has told us to only apply those to the black community, but yet we excuse it on our end so many times. We excuse it. Where was that when the police officer, you know, shot, shot the black man? We don't quote all those scriptures. If you realize it, and I know it's ugly truth to face. You're less likely when you see a police authority figure or a white person do that. You're less likely to quote all those scriptures, but you are programmed to immediately quote it when you see the black man do it. So you can't just say things like, well, the word says, you know, you don't need to sin out of anger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that's taking that scripture out of context. And that's what the white man would do all the time. So you're sounding like the oppressors back in the slavery days that would take those same statements Take those same scriptures, whether you realize it or not, the programming that comes out of that. And then you wonder why someone who's black and maybe your beloved member sitting right next to you, you love and give hugs to every day, it lashes out at you. And then you're like, you aren't operating the love of God. No, you didn't realize you weren't operating really in the love of God because you weren't understanding of the trauma. That's what it is. So we have to be careful with our religious terms. Let me keep moving. <sighs> which lands to trauma. We love to call it outrage. And of course it's outrage, but we love to say they're just angry and outrage. You know, the, the whole angry black woman thing comes out and it's like, uh, yeah, but where's all that behavior coming from? Where's the outrage coming from? It's trauma. It is trauma. We give, we used not to God. No, we used to not to, but we're as a society, we're finally starting to give rape victims and molestation victims the trauma. We give soldiers that come home from war, PSTD, um, trauma. 
uh, the trauma card because it is trauma. But why is it the fact when we come back to black America and black people in general, and then when they go through trauma, which is my loved one was just wrongfully murdered. My loved one was just wrongly denied a job that they were more qualified than their white counterparts, but didn't get it. My loved one does not get a good education. My loved one does not give the medical attention they need. And while amongst black women, childbirth is such a high risk rate because they, of all those things that are going on in those factors. And the nurses don't realize they're programmed to be less sensitive to a black woman while she's giving birth because she's viewed as an animal giving birth to another animal. Let me digress a little bit. And, you know, with all those things being said, you know, you can, you just call it outrage. It's trauma. That's traumatizing when you have to fear for your life every day. And I'm not saying we should all, it's easy to say, well, as Christians, we don't fear. No, we don't want to let fear get in us as Christians, whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, red, doesn't matter. No, those principles still apply. But don't dismiss the fact what people are having to resist. I can tell a congregation, I can tell you guys from the platform, don't be afraid. Yes, there's a level, but there's something you are having to fight off that I will never have to fight off as a pastor when I say don't be afraid. I don't have to be afraid of being shot by a police officer wrongfully for doing nothing. I don't have to be afraid of going for a run and being, being murdered on my run. I don't have to be afraid of someone calling me on 911 just because they got a little pissed off and they're like, how dare you, animal, disrespect me? I don't. And we have to be sympathetic towards those things. We have to understand we have to walk our, our black brothers and sisters through that trauma and be understanding to that and not be so quick to be dismissive to that. Yeah, you may not understand everything. I know I don't understand everything. I don't. I'm not educated about everything. But there's two things. One, don't stay where you can't understand. Don't stay in a place where you can't be uneducated. You can educate yourself. Read a book. Talk to a black person. Talk to multiple ones, you know, and don't read the, the white history books. Let me uh, chill a little bit. Um, you know, you can you can come to that place. But here's the here's the last part I want to get into. James, two talked about this. Faith without action is dead. How can you look at your brother or sister who is hungry, who is tired, who is uh, needing food and say, God bless you. Be well, be full and then walk off, you know, um, First Corinthians 12 says, when one part of the body is hurting, we're all hurting. I don't know how black people got, ex well, I do know how, I already told you how, but I don't know why we continue to think, you know, black people need to be excluded from the body as Christians. It, it's, you got to challenge that in yourself if, you, if you're experiencing that. Next thing is First Corinthians 13, verse 6 and 7. In I, NIV, NLT translation talks about, man, we don't rejoice at an injustice, but we rejoice when Truth and justice went out and love always protects follows that immediate statement. We have got to protect our brothers and sisters. We've got to do that. We've got to condemn the injustice and rejoice and sound off justice is what we've got to do. We've got to do that. We've got to step up and do those things is what we got to do. Uh, you know, we've got to take action. It cannot just be speech, man. Yes, praise God. I'm, I want you to flood social media, but it can't stop again. It can't be a hashtag again. Do the hashtags. It can't only be those things. It can't only be any of those things. We've got to take it to a new level. So I'm calling all world changers, really calling the entire world, to be honest. But my, my influence extends over World Changers Church, New York. And I'm calling all world changers to say, first of all, I love you. I appreciate all of you. I give no shame if anybody was like, Wes, you know, we didn't know. We didn't understand. Hey, hey, nobody's upset. Nobody's angry. Nobody's mad about that. But don't be silent. Don't be complacent. And now you do know. <laughs> it, you know, I, I hope this video shares. I, I you know, I, I would hope to see a lot more members come back and watch this. I'll be honest with you, because uh, more of our members need to hear this. We, we've got to be straight about this. And yes, I know I'm coming on the platform of World Changes Church, New York. And uh, I know I'm coming as a pastor and I know sometimes I can be like, well, you know, that can be a little scary sometimes. I'll be honest, because I want to make sure we honor our man and woman of God. But honestly, our man and woman of God's black, too. 
all our members, the majority of our members across World Change Days, there's a lot. It's minority and black. Yeah, we have our white members. You got a white pastor right here. We got a few of us white pastors. You know, you got about three of us in the ministry right now. But, you know, we've got to stand up and say something. And, you know, the last thing on this call and response, it's people, black people don't want to know if you're against them or, or racism or if you're, if you're a ra- not a racist. They want to know, are you for them? And are you going to help? In the end of it, Do you care? Whether you understand it or not, the one thing I know everybody on this that hears this understands is I care. And that's what this comes down to. It's okay if you don't know everything. I didn't always know. I told you my woke level, I said, I'll I'll give it a three or four maybe out of it on a scale of 10. But I didn't always know a three or four. I didn't. And um, 